Hello everyone. My name is Miss Patricia from the Cook Memorial Library and I'm here to welcome you to the first day of summer. Summer is finally here and this is also the longest day of the year. Isn't that exciting? So there we will have more hours of daylight this day than any other day which is really fun. Sunset is officially at 831 tonight but it'll stay a little bit lighter after that. So this means that you'll have more daylight today. You can stay out later to play and you might notice it might even still be light when you go to sleep tonight. This is also called the summer solstice which basically describes the position of the earth facing the sun. On this very day, the sun is more directly aligned with the northern hemisphere. As our earth travels around the sun, it's moving and tilting so that our part of the world is facing the sun today at the most direct point. So we're going to have a very special day, however you look at it. So I'm going to read you a story today about summer. And it's called Possum and the Summer Storm. That's why our program is called Possum and the Summer Storm. It's written and illustrated by a wonderful author and illustrator called Anne Hunter. And she's written some other books about pos possum that we will possibly read again. Now, as you can tell by the title, something is going to happen on this summer day. You know, warm weather can mean sunny days, and it can also mean stormy days. So you can imagine that something is going to happen with a summer storm. Now there's a picture of possum on the cover. A possum is sometimes called an opossum, and we do have those in our area. You might not see them very often because they're nocturnal. That means they prefer to come around at night. One time I actually looked out my front door and saw a possum on my steps, and it really startled me but they are very common in our area. So you might want to see if you ever notice one at night. Don't be surprised. And you also see a huge black cloud on the cover of this book. So that kind of gives you an idea of what's going to happen. Notice what is on Possum's back. His little babies. And I wonder what's going on that they're riding on Possum's back. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? Well, let's get on with our story. Now on the cover, on the title page, you can see that they're actually, it looks like they're in the river or a creek and they're swimming and the little babies are on Possum's back. So let's find out what happens. Possum looked out one summer afternoon. Time to come in, he called to his baby possums. It looks like we're in for some weather. Check out that black cloud and notice where Possum is in his house. Thunder crashed. Wind howled. The possum family watched as the creek rose. Here's a picture of the storm. It's raining so hard that the creek looks like it might overflow its banks. Hang on tight, children, possum yelled as their brush pile home was swept downstream. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but their home was made out of sticks 
and dried materials that could easily be blown away by the wind. Oh, Papa, our home is gone, cried the young possums. Where will we live? Where will we sleep? Possum surveyed the soggy land below. Notice where they are. They've all climbed up into a tree so they can not get wet. There was not a brush pile in sight. Now, their house is called a brush pile because it's made from dried materials. He was good at gathering leaves, but a leaf pile would not be enough. Don't worry, children, he said. We'll find a new home. Possum climbed down. A chipmunk hopped by. Where's your brush pile? She squeaked. Gone, sighed Possum, washed away. Oh, bad luck, the chipmunk sympathized. I could help you dig a new home, she offered. Dig, he asked. Yes, you know, she said. We'll dig a bedroom, a bathroom, a larder. A larder is a bit like a pantry. It's where you keep your food and supplies. Possum's eyes widened. Yes, said Possum. That sounds very nice. It looks like the sun has come out again, so maybe the storm has passed. I wonder if Possum will like living underground. The possums followed the chipmunk up to higher ground. She sent possum to gather dry leaves for bedding while she and the little possums set to digging. There's their hill. Look at our new home, Papa, cried the little possums when possum returned. Possum looked at the door hole in dismay. Now you can see that the chipmunk and the little possums have dug little passageways and rooms under the ground. You see those? But there was a doorway to get through. You can see the little possum right there just fits in the doorway. Oh dear. Possum said, I'm sure it is lovely in there, but I will never fit. I'm afraid. Oh dear, I can see that now. Well, perhaps you could use it as the basement for your new home. Ma Possum and his children walked down to the marsh in search of a home. A marsh is a bit like a wetland. They found a nice one. You can see it right here, sitting in the water. But look, there's someone in there. Oh, the, unfortunately, it was occupied. Hello, muskrat, he called. How did you come by such a nice house? It's called a lodge, called the muskrat and I built it myself. Cattails and mud. Want me to show you? Now, obviously there's plenty of mud near the creek from the land. And you see these plants at the bottom? Those are called cattails because of the little brown plants at the end of the leaves that look like tails. Well, this is a lovely house. Muskrat followed them up the rise and showed the possums how to build a dome of reeds and mud over the burrow that the chipmunk had helped them dig. So look, they're starting a new house to build over the underground passage homes. A wasp 
flew by. Hmm, that's interesting. What's happening here, she buzzed. Possum's brush pile washed away, answered the muskrat. He needs help building a new home. I can make a comb of chewed wood and saliva. Now, maybe you've heard of a honeycomb, right? So the wasp can also build a comb. And she's going to build it from chewed up wood and moisten it with saliva, which you all might think of as spit. But it holds together nicely. The comb might make nice windows, said the wasp, and she set to work. There's the dome of their new home that Muskrat helped them with. Now, look at the windows that the wasp was able to build in their home. As they stood admiring the wasp's delicate handiwork, an oriole flew in. Now, an oriole is the name of a bird. You can see him sitting in the branches, looking down and admiring the new home with the lovely windows. I heard there was some building going on and thought you might need my help, he sang. Everyone knows a nest is best. Of course an Oriole would know how to build a nest, right? Why sleep on the damp ground when you could swing in a nest? Let me show you. Look at the lovely nest Oriole was able to build. The Oriole wove hammock-like nests of grasses and vines in the tree above the house. So that will make a lovely place to sleep. They all stood back. Oh, Papa, it's the most beautiful home in the world, exclaimed the little possums. How can we ever thank you, Possum asked the animals. We could never have done it without you. And look at their beautiful new home with the underground burrows, the beautiful dome-like house made by muskrat, and the lovely nest made by the oriole plus the windows made by the by wasp. Come in, cried Possum. The wind blew, the rain poured, and the animals watched, snug and dry, from Possum's new home. There was room for everyone in their new home. You can see Oriole right here, and you can see Possum inside this comb window and baby possums and the chipmunk are in the top windows and the orioles are up in the nest. It looks very cozy. Come back soon, called possum. When the rain was finally over, my home is your home. So there is Possum's new home, but there's plenty of room for all the other animals if they should ever need a home. Wasn't that a lovely story? Well, I hope you have a wonderful summer. And also the next time when we do have a summer storm, Think about where all the animals go when it rains. See you next time. Check our website for all of our fun summer programs. Bye now. Hello everyone. We just read a summer book called Possum and the Summer Storm. Let's find out some more about that storm. Maybe 
you will start watching the weather. First, listen. What do you hear? It sounds like a storm. Let's find out some more about the weather. How about it? This book is called Watching the Weather. So that would be a good place to start. Of course, in summer, the weather is warm. And the sun is bright. Look at the sky. The weather is changing. Dark clouds are moving above us. They block the sun. The sun's still there. The clouds are just covering it. You know there will be a storm soon. Next, you know what comes next. After the dark clouds comes the rain. Look at them. The wind will be blowing too. Then, here's something I'm sure you've seen. Lightning. Thunder and lightning. Sometimes you will see and hear during the summer storm. Then after the, the storm clears, finally the sun will come out again. The air is cooler after the storm. The weather has changed. Some people study the weather. They look at special pictures that show how the clouds are moving. People who study the weather are on the news and they give us the weather report of what the weather will be like tomorrow. The weather is fun to watch. Now you might be wondering, what makes it actually rain? Let's think about that for a minute. How does a thunderstorm form? Well, here's what happens. Most thunderstorms form during the day. And the first thing you would notice is that the air gets very warm in the summer and the air is full of water vapor. It gets warmer and warmer and it rises up into the sky. The water vapor gets so high and it mixes with dust. Vapor and dust form clouds. Some clouds can grow into giant shapes with wide flat tops. Now notice these clouds. The tops are flat. So this is something you might notice when you look up at the sky in the summer to see if the tops of the clouds are flat. These clouds are called anvil clouds. If you see clouds like this, anvil clouds, it means a st rain is on the way. Watch them pile up and grow thick and dark. They're filled with millions of water droplets. These droplets get bigger and bigger and they become heavy. So some of the drops fall back to the ground as rain. They carry cool air with them, rushing downward. That's why the air cools off when it rains. Now let's talk about thunder and lightning. You probably noticed uh, when you hear thunder, you sometimes see lightning and then sometimes you hear thunder. Thunder is the sound of the heated air rising and expanding. This air can travel more than 1,000 feet per second. That's what makes the sound. Lightning flashes 
A single bolt of lightning can make the air in its path five times hotter than the surface of the sun. Lightning is so hot, it can strike buildings and power poles. It can split trees and melt telephone wires. That's how hot lightning is. Thunderstorms can travel together. Their edges form a single long wall of menacing clouds called a squall line. Well, I hope that you will start noticing the sky and maybe you'll be able to predict when a storm is coming. So since we've been talking so much about storms, start noticing the sky. And you know, if you do hear thunder or see lightning, you should always go home or seek shelter. When thunder roars, move indoors, right? Another fun thing you might do this summer is keep a weather journal. You could do it with pictures and words. And notice how the weather changes every day. That's a really fun thing to do. You even might give a weather report for your family based on your observations. And then you can see if it really comes to be. Whatever you decide to do this summer, enjoy the great outdoors and keep safe and notice our beautiful summer sky. Have fun everyone.